All right, everyone, once again, I am Tom Downey. We're here on live on the Cowboys Report. We'll come back to Zeke later on. In the meantime, there are some other news and rumors items around the Dallas Cowboys that I wanted to get to here. Many of you asked me on Twitter, at WhatGoingDowney, what about Mike Daniels and the Dallas Cowboys? Does that make sense? I hate to, again, be the bearer of bad news. Uh, one star on this one. I don't Don't get your hopes up here. But don't, don't get your hopes up because the Cowboys, even though they like Mike Daniels, they don't seem all that interested. The reports are from both uh, Mike Fisher and Brian Broaddus is they're not going to pursue Daniels. because, And I think in large part why here, A, some money reasons. B, they still want snaps from Malik Collins and Tyrone Crawford and Tristan Hill. Now, I'll give it the one star because that could change. Like, if Tyrone Crawford has a setback in his hip issue, more on that coming up in the show. If Malik Collins gets hurt again, if Tristan Hill gets hurt, well, things could change. But, as I said on Twitter, don't get your hopes up. Now, I'm not arguing that the Cowboys wouldn't benefit from Mike Daniels. I, I think they, they would. And I don't think Daniels is the same guy we saw in 2017-2016, but there's no doubt he could help out the Cowboys and would be a nice impact defensive lineman for them. But remember what, how the Cowboys view their current defensive line. They like Tyrone Crawford a lot. And I know a lot of you guys like to cut him and save money. I get where you're coming from there. Antoine Woods is a great one technique in, in terms of what the Cowboys ask him to do. Malik Collins, they are still high on him. Tristan Hill, they want to get snaps to. So unless you cut Tyrone Crawford, you're going to cut into the snaps for Hill. That's not what Dallas wants to do. So do you want Dallas to add Mike Daniels type? One for yes, zero for no. Let me know in the comments section. One for yes, zero for no. I would have interest in it. I would like to do it. As I've said many a time before when it comes to a notable free agent that gets cut, I just don't think Dallas is going to. Funny enough, though, I see more yeses than ones than I thought I was going to see there. But keep those votes coming, folks. One for yes, zero for no. Let's move then to more contract talks as we now have to do with the Zeke holdout here. How about a DAC extension during training camp? I'm going to give this one three stars. I think this does happen. There could be some snags or whatever, but I feel pretty confident, much like the Cowboys are, that this deal does get done during training camp here for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the likely figure here comes in around 32 to $33 million per year. Now, my biggest point for Dak Prescott, and it's a point I've made many, many times, and many of you have as well in the comments section, the sooner the better. The sooner you pay Dak Prescott, the more money that you end up saving. That's the main takeaway here for the Dallas Cowboys, is if you get that deal done before Jared Goff, you will have saved yourself money. If you wait till after Goff gets done, the price only goes up. And yes, the salary cap rises, but you only cost yourself more money. And I know some of you are like, well, let's wait and see if Dak plays better. Well, sure. We just did that with Demarcus Lawrence, though. It cost the Cowboys like $3 million per year. And the Cowboys believe that Dak Prescott is their franchise guy, which I think is a reasonable thought here. My biggest problem is you've already cost yourself money here. You waited until after Russell Wilson got paid, until after Big Ben got paid, until after Carson Wentz got paid. Had you done this as soon as humanly possible, you might have gotten Dak for like $30 million. Instead, now you might get Dak for like thirty-five or $33 million. Maybe it's 34 somewhere in that range, but it's going to come in around the Carson Wentz deal. Because Wentz signed and because you can make a legitimate argument that Dak has been better than Carson Wentz, especially when you factor in health, which kind of is a big deal, he could easily earn 34. I know his agent approached that number. That's not a huge surprise to me. Question for you guys. Today is National Refreshment Day. So what is your favorite drink? I think I need something strong right now in light of the uh, Ezekiel Elliott news. But what is your favorite drink? It does not have to be anything hard or anything like that. But let me know in, in the comments section. What is your favorite drink out there. Let's see. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for some of these comments to flow in here. Favorite drink. It can be like a, a Sprite or a root beer. Someone says Dr. Pepper, root beer. Weird flex. Uh, Aflife saying Lone Star. I, I don't know why you would take that there. Lots of Dr. Pepper. Pennsylvania Dutch Birch Beer. have never had that one. I think Dr. Pepper has the, pl pr the plurality of those votes there. So keep those coming in the comments section. Next up, 
Is there not going to be a, is, or has there been no Byron Jones progress for his upcoming deal? I'll give this one three stars too. I almost put it as four. But this kind of makes sense to me, and I believe the report out of uh, the Dallas Morning News that there hasn't been much progress here. And think about it from the Cowboys' perspective. A, number one, you're probably focused on Dak and Amari, and now Zeke Elliott more so than Byron Jones. And with the context here, playing out the year might actually make the most sense for all parties, which I typically don't like, but Byron's coming off the hip injury. And I understand the concern that this could be a one-year wonder. I feel pretty good about Byron Jones. But I understand the context here that, you know, he's coming off the hip injury. Let's wait and see and see what he wants from the Dallas Cowboys in the end. Now, for Byron, the biggest thing that I take away here is that the cornerback market is about to get reset. We just saw Xavier Howard get paid. But Norman, Johnson, Rhodes, Patrick Peterson, those are old deals. Jalen Ramsey, he's made it very clear that he wants the bag. That's that's his big takeaway. So we'll see what the numbers look like. The going rate right now for Byron is probably about 15 million bucks. But if you wait until the offseason, it could become 16, 17 million. And at that point, even though the Cowboys can't afford Byron Jones, they can't afford him if they want him. The Cowboys could choose to say, you know what, it's fine. We'll just give more playing time to Michael Jackson or Jordan Lewis, and we'll devote that money elsewhere. I know the interception numbers aren't great for Byron, but you don't luck into 14 pass breakups. He's good. So here's my question to you. What would you pay Byron Jones per year? Let me know in the comments section. I am happy to give him $15 million. I don't have any issue with that. Now, maybe you guys come in lower there. Nathaniel Doe says zero. Okay, that's, that, that's weird. Molten says 13. Going rate right now is 15. Keep that in mind with your comments, folks, and keep them coming. Some more, I guess, bad news for training camp here. Are there two more heading on the PUP, aka the physically unable to perform list? Yeah, four stars on this one. Again, nobody panic. This is not even like as bad as Zeke. But Tyrone Crawford and Noah Brown are going to be heading to the public, at least to open up training camp. Now, again, I'll make this note. This is precautionary. This is just a precautionary move here for the Dallas Cowboys. There's no reason to make them start the year off the PUP. And then if they have a setback or whatever, well, now they're kind of screwed. Now, Crawford in particular, I'm not concerned. I am actually a little bit more concerned there um, about the off the field stuff and potential suspension. He doesn't need reps. Noah Brown, meanwhile, he kind of does. He kind of does need those reps. He's in a, he is in a fight here for the, a roster spot. He's not guaranteed anything. Now, it is more of a minor deal for both, but Noah Brown is the one that needs those reps. And he's coming off an e scope, by the way. At defensive line, if Crawford misses time, you know what? That's probably not even the worst thing. He's a veteran. We know what we have in Tyron Crawford and what he brings to the team there. Antoine Woods, okay, he's a one technique, but that's fine. Malik Collins, he could use some reps. Most importantly, Tristan Hill needs reps. So if you miss some time for Tyrone Crawford and it gets Hill more up to speed, that's okay. Also, watch out for Daniel Wise, who Cowboys like him, by the way. Wide receiver, meanwhile. Well, look, if Noah Brown misses time, he's battling with guys like Tavon Austin, Cedric Wilson, Lance Lenore. John Vay Johnson, Davis, Smith, Jalen Guyton, etc. If Noah Brown misses time, that helps everybody else around those players. So that is a big deal for Noah Brown, who, by the way, has battled injuries before. So hopefully he's able to, to get out there and be able to, to, to make an impact. But that's the one, more so than Crawford or Jones or Lawrence, that I'm watching for to see when he actually comes back to the team. Now, today's show is brought to you guys from our friends over at my book. Get over to chatsports.com slash cowboys. Use that promo code GOCOWBOYS, by the way. That gets you a 100% deposit bonus. Here's what that means. If you put down 50 bucks, they're going to give you an extra 50 for free. Well, put down 100, that gets you 100. That's just how math works works out you guys know that it's chatsports.com slash cowboys and use that promo code go cowboys for a hundred percent deposit bonus all right i see cowboys nation is in the comment section he'll like this one what about a possible alan hearns return i'll give it two stars 
there, there is some possibility to this one, as weird as it sounds since he was just cut by the Dallas Cowboys. But remember, the Cowboys wanted Alan Hearns back at a lower price. But Hearns was like, no, I want to test the market. Now, if the market is poor and Hearns isn't getting much offers in terms of playing time and money, that's what I mean by more there in that third bullet point, then maybe he could come back to the Cowboys because the coaching staff is very high on Alan Hearns. Hearns, though, is visiting the Miami Dolphins, and I think Miami gives Hearns a better chance, A, and he went to school down there, B, a chance for more playing time, more money. Hearns didn't make sense for the Cowboys at a $6 million price tag, but Alan Hearns does make sense for the Cowboys at 2 or 2.5 or maybe even as high as 3. That does make sense for Hearns. Now, The Cowboys, I do not believe, need Alan Hearns on this roster. But I do know that the coaching staff wants him on there. Because Alan Hearns, unlike most of these receivers, brings you A, veteran experience, not that you really need that, but more importantly, brings you a guy that can play outside and inside. So if you want your top backup, Hearns does fit that mold. You just can't pay him $6 million. But if you want to pay him 2 or 3 then, as I've said before, I'm actually kind of on, on on board with that one. So do you guys want Hearns back on the Cowboys? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know in the comments section. Y for yes, N for no. I am open to it, but it has to be at the right price tag, and I won't be upset in the end if Hearns isn't back on the Dallas Cowboys. So keep those jokes flowing. I see some maybes, but I think the yeses in the end kind of have it. Let's talk defense then here. How about Jalen Jelks, the seventh round pick out of Oregon as the team Sam, a.k.a. the strong side linebacker. Several of you asked me about this, and I promised we'd get to it here. Two stars on this one. Two stars. I think there's some some reasoning behind it, and I'm, I'm intrigued by it. I also don't know if it's the most likely outcome. So Katie Drummond, friend of the show, had a roster projection. He, he kind of started this idea of what if you move Jalen Jelks to linebacker, kind of like Kyle Wilbur did? I'm open to it. And my first thought was, mm, I hadn't thought about that before. I kind of like that idea. I think there's some some potential here. Now, Jelks has a super difficult time making this roster at defensive end. Uh, there's just so much depth and bodies already there in Demarcus Lawrence, Quinn. Look, the Cowboys go nine deep at defensive end, if you include Crawford and Gregory you got to cut at least two of those guys, if not three. I, I have a tough time seeing Jokes being the guy. But at linebacker, especially if the Cowboys want to go seven deep, there is a little bit more depth. So I, I went back. I'm like, okay, let, let me look here at, at, at my notes about Jalen Jokes and at the combine numbers. There is some, some similarity here. Now I'll make note, 6'5", 256. That's edge size for a 3-4 outside linebacker, not really, uh, you know, 4-3 defensive end. He's a little bit light for, kind of a tweener in the end, kind of like Kyle Wilbur ended up being. He was oh, he was in a weird spot at Oregon. He was almost a 3-4 defensive end and sometimes played over the defensive tackle or the, the offensive guards as, as a defensive tackle. He wasn't used well. So it would be a pretty big switch for the Cowboys to move Jokes to the Sam linebacker spot. But I think he could fit in that role. My biggest concern is, well, how does he hold up in coverage? I haven't seen him do much coverage stuff at Oregon. So that's my biggest concern. Because if you play Sam, I mean, you got to be able to cover. Otherwise, there's really no purpose to it. So where should Jalen Jelks play? Let me know in the comments section where you think Jelks should play for the Dallas Cowboys. Type DE for defensive end. Type LB for linebacker. Let me know in the comments section. I think if you're going to move him to linebacker, by the way, you really have to probably put him on the practice squad for a year. I don't think he's ready to be an active guy. I think if you move him to linebacker, you can stash him for a year. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section. DE for defensive end, LB for linebacker. Let's go back now to Zeke Elliott. Again, if you're just now joining us here on the live show, the Cowboys had expected Zeke to show up. For the, for the fight that left today. Problem is, he wasn't on the plane. Now, this is not, technically speaking, a holdout yet. That's not what this is. Because it can't be a holdout until tomorrow. 
Zeke was not required to show up on the flight. He can go to California on his own if he wants. Here's the thing. Like, if you, if you plan on showing up to Cowboys camp in almost all cases, you're just going to take the team charter because that saves you time and energy and effort. It makes way more sense to do it that way. Plain and simple there. Now, Zeke can still take his own flight, but let's read between the lines here. It's not officially a holdout, but this, this is a holdout. That, that's what this is. I will be very surprised if Zeke shows up at camp tomorrow, given that he wasn't on the team charter as the Cowboys expected him to be. It's a disappointment. That's what this is. It's, it's a big-time disappointment from Zeke, assuming he doesn't show up, which he technically can, but it ain't looking great. It's, it's not looking great here for, for, the, for the Dallas Cowboys and Zeke as they hold it out here. In reality, I think this is a holdout now for the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.